Jim Clouk here on the Beach Money Podcast. I hope everybody's having a beach money day. Hope everyone's on the beach doing well financially. Beach money is not just about money, but it's also about a lifestyle. And I always say you need a little bit of money at least to get that lifestyle. On the program today is Todd Falcone. Hey, Todd, how are you? I'm doing exceptional. How are you? I'm doing great, Todd. Thanks for joining me today. You are known as the Fearless Networker. I love that title. Tell me, what does a fearless networker do? Ah, just proceeds through life uh, in a fearless manner, not worried about what other people think about you and what you're doing. You get after it. And while we all have fear, including myself, I mean, I've got the brand and the trademark, the fearless networker. Um, it's acting in spite of how you feel and pushing through the fear to get the things in life that you want. You know, it's amazing what we can do, Todd. When I was young, Believe it or not, people really don't believe this. I was shy. I stuttered. I stammered. And I've since then been on radio coast to coast. I do podcasts every day. I get up on stage in front of thousands of people and speak. And people say, there's no way when you were younger, you stuttered, stammered, and were afraid to talk to people. And I said, yes. And I think much like an alcoholic, I think when you have those traits, you're still kind of shy forever, but you overcome these things. And I think that's what you're talking about. Absolutely. And honestly, uh, I was afraid to stand on the platform. I almost failed speech class in college, and I've been a professional speaker for the last 17 years. So it's been kind of crazy. It's ironic, isn't it? Wouldn't it be fun to go back in time? to, you know, to the fifth grade, sixth grade school teacher and say, look where I am now. Cause a lot of them, I know thought I was going to live under a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no better, no better uh, revenge than a massive success. Exactly. So you're in the network marketing space and I know that you love to help others grow in that space. Can you tell everybody what you do to help other people in network marketing? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, going way, way back, uh, I've been involved in the network marketing space as of this year, 35 years. Wow. So it's been my livelihood. It's been my life. It's been the really the one and only profession that I've been in as an adult. Um, when I first got introduced to it, I was, you know, super curious about one, you know, I wanted to win. I wanted to be successful at it. I wanted to work like probably everybody does who joins a business. And I struggled for a while. Um, you know, I wasn't this immediate, you know, guy that ma made massive money out of out of the shoot. Uh, it took me a while to kind of figure it out, figure the game out, and uh, had you know, 16, 17 years in the field of successfully building companies. And um, ultimately, I had somebody who called me. I had a company that I was with for eleven years that uh, unfortunately went out of business. And when that happened, a guy called me up and asked me to come and speak. And I was like. Uh, yeah, I guess. What do you want me to speak about? Like, I, I never really saw myself as a speaker or trained. I was never part of that. Uh, wasn't wasn't part of the plan. And so I went and spoke at this event in San Francisco. And that one event led to another, led to another, led to another, and has led to like a you know over a decade and a half of speaking all over, all over the world on network marketing. And basically, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking my own personal life experiences, real world life experiences, and and sharing with people how to succeed where, where they can maybe not make the same mistakes that I did uh, rather than, you know, some people like, uh, I don't know. I think if you're going to learn something, it's probably good to learn something from somebody who's been there and done it. Like I would ne never take golf lessons from somebody that doesn't, you know, isn't exceptional at playing golf. I wouldn't learn to fish from somebody who's never touched a fishing rod. I wouldn't want to learn how to do network marketing from somebody who's never done network marketing. So the perspective that I always provide is one from real world, you know, successful field experience. And uh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, I'm on board with you. You know, if you want to learn anything in any field, you want to find either the best or people who are successful in that area. Can you imagine being in high school and being on the football team to find out that the football coach had never played football. Now you got to scratch your head. But the football coach says, that's okay. I've been studying it for a decade now. Read a lot of books and I watch Sunday football and Thursday night. 
I watch it Monday night. I watch it all the time. And I watch college too. So I can teach you. It's a little different, right? When you haven't been on the field and you haven't been in the trenches, you can read about it all you want. It's like going to college and no offense to college professors, but many of the professors that were teaching me had not done what they were teaching in the real world. And my favorite professors yeah. were often the ones that came in at night for three hours, once a week, a three hour class. They were almost always a half hour late rushing in from their real gig. And they were the best. They yeah. were like, all right, I'm the real McCoy. I don't know what's going on in these halls here at school, but let me tell you kids, this is the real thing. And I loved it. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, it's interesting. Like when you, you mentioned coaches, so <laughs> like a, a football coach, uh, and I, I want to say this for the viewers, listeners, whatever, this is important as you're, as we're getting into whatever, whatever happens in this conversation, uh, you, you don't have to be, you know, ha have been the number one player on the field, uh, you know, the, the single best player in your league to go coach. In fact, a lot of coaches, uh, professional coaches that, you know, let's take the NFL, for example, they all played football um, and they all have a deep understanding of the game of football. Uh, and most of them played, uh, you know, professional football. Some only played college, college football and became coaches. So it's, it's really a matter of having a, a clear, deep, real understanding of whatever the game is in this case, football, in order to be able to effectively coach football versus somebody who's like, yeah, I watch, you know, Sundays, I eat peanuts all day and I watch football and I'm going to try to go become a football coach. It's probably not a guy that's going to be successful, you know, teaching a bunch of others how to how to go play that game. No, I totally agree. So in the game of network marketing, how do you coach people? So so let me set this up. Let's say that um, I want to get involved or I'm already involved in network marketing and I plug myself in and things are going OK but I really don't know how to make this thing explode. And I want to be a big player eventually. And I understand it could take five, 10, 15, 20 years. How can you help me? Well, I do that in a number of different ways. I have produced, uh, I don't even know how many I'd have to count, a lot of uh, training programs on both audio and video covering different aspects of you know, creating success in network marketing. Um, you know, how to win in the game of prospecting was the first program that I produced. And honestly, if I looked at, in fact, I did look at it a couple of weeks ago because we're doing a full rebuild on my website. If I was going to go reproduce it again, which I'm not, I would do it exactly the way I taught it. And that teaches people a format or a formula on how to generally improve their prospecting skills. I have another training, for example, that's called Insider Secrets to Recruiting Professionals, which teaches people specifically how to recruit professional people, real estate, insurance, finance, mortgage, small business owners, people that are you know already successful in what they do, they're just doing it someplace else. So that's one way I teach. And that's something that you know they can listen to or watch over and over again. Everything now in, in today's day and age is digitally delivered. So stuff that was on CD and, and uh, DVD is now all you know delivered to your mobile device or your whatever your laptop. And then I run uh, coaching programs and retreats. I have a 90-day accountability program, which is live. We meet every Tuesday night. I've been running that since 2008. Uh, so that's a live, more interactive type of uh, environment. I also do small group retreats, and that's a really uh, high-level, uh, you know, close, you know, we're, we're, I'm literally living with you for five days in the house and helping you build your business. So <clears throat> there's different aspects to it. There, I, I do a small amount of one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm pretty selective, you know, considering we're talking about beach money, uh, you know, when you're, when you're putting yourself into this one-on-one -on -one scenario, like a friend of mine who does it, he doesn't, he's got money, but he doesn't have any beach time. And uh, he's, he's literally coaching people one-on-one -on -one, 12 to 15 hours a day, seven days a week. He hasn't, he has no, he loves what he does. He's a workaholic, but um, I kind of like having a good lifestyle along with, uh, you know, the money that comes with it. I agree. Speaking of beach money, um, I've I've understood how beach money has made a lot of my income over the past 20 years has come in that form. And what's interesting is a lot of people don't believe it's possible. People don't necessarily believe in network marketing. Um, sometimes it gets a bad rap and people are like, that's not for me. That, the, you know, as for the few, it's a scam. It's a scheme. It's pyramid. Only the people who got in early can really make money. Um, 
that's not necessarily true. It does come down to a lot of hard work. And if you are an individual who is not willing to learn from others, which is what we're talking about with Todd, then you're probably not going to win and you're probably going to drop out of it. Wouldn't you agree? 100%. And all those th things that you just mentioned, I've heard those things umpteen times, too many to count. Um, only the people at the top make the money. Uh, you know, network marketing works for a special group of people or something. And in my opinion, network marketing works for those who work it. Um, not, does it, does it equal? Does everybody succeed at the same pace? No, everybody's different, different personality types, different lives, different backgrounds. But honestly, if you find a good company that has, you know, valuable products or services to bring in the marketplace and there's a real market for it and, and you, uh, diligently uh, apply yourself over an extended period of time and you don't stop, which a lot of people unfortunately do, they stop. I mean, I, I didn't make money for two years. My first two years, I made nothing. I made nothing. Zero. I mean, I could have quit. In fact, I was I was with Jordan actually on his 60th birthday in um, the Dominican Republic. And it was interesting. We we're having this conversation. And I was like, because I, you know, I know Jordan. I've known him for, I don't know, almost 20 years. And uh, we were we were talking. I was like, man, you just, you know, man, you just never gave up, you know? And he goes, no, you're wrong. And I was like, what? <laughs> he goes, I always gave up. Like, because he was in like whatever, 12 or 13 companies before he finally made money. Uh, in network marketing. And he said, no, that was, that's what I did. I always gave up. And he was with good, you know, in some cases, good quality network marketing companies. Some of them weren't great companies, but some of them were that are actually, in fact, still in business today. But what he did is he only applied himself for a short period of time and then quit and went on to the next one and then quit and went on the next one. So it was interesting, even as, as a good friend, we ended up actually doing a, video, a live video on that subject because I just found it fascinating because here I am thinking, oh, you, you just never, you just never quit. Like I'm the guy that never quit. Like I just was super stubborn and I'm like, I'm going to go until I'm going to just figure it out. I don't care how long it takes. Like, I'm just not, I'm, I was just, I was like a pit bull, man. I'm going to keep going and, you know, learning along the way, of course. And like, if it's not, if it's working, keep doing it. If it's not working, stop doing it, you know, do, do it differently. Um, but, uh, you know, for example, in Jordan's case, he just worked for a little bit and then bailed to another company and then, finally understood, like, I got to put my head down, focus, and the rest is history for him. You know, you should call yourself the tenacious networker. Or the bulldog. <laughs> because definitely tenacious, for sure. Tenacious. And that's really what it takes. And I want to tell everybody who's watching and listening to this. There's really no easy path to the beach money lifestyle. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And what's nice about it, though, when you become conditioned over a lot of time in and you build up your business, you can then have more time for the beach or for skiing. You'll have more money as well, but you can't be greedy. A lot of people want to get into something and they want all the benefits right now. I'll give you an example. This is unrelated to network marketing, but I think some people will understand this. My wife is a flight attendant and she's been flying since she was 19 years old. I'm not going to tell you how old she is, but you can get an idea how old I am, and she's younger than me, but she's been flying for decades, and people get to see the fact that she flies around the world, gets to see the world, she makes a good income, and has great benefits from a large airline, and people want to get into it, and my wife says, it's not so easy up front. You have to go on reserve, which means you wait by the airport. Back in the day, she had a pager. And she had to be within an hour from the airport when that pager went off in case someone didn't show up. Now, she's the one who may not show up, and that other person who's on reserve has to. And you don't get paid much in the beginning. You got to put in your dues. It's very similar in network marketing as well. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, for sure. I mean, you're like, it's, and that's, that, that, that's actually interesting you bring that up because a lot of people, like everyone who comes to network marketing is accustomed to getting paid in a certain fashion a certain manner work two weeks get a check work two weeks get a check or work a week get a check typically you know your your bi-weekly check right and then you get involved in network marketing after a whole life of being paid in a particular way and it's like wait i just worked two weeks where's my check i worked a month where's my check i worked two <laughs> months where's my check or shoot i worked i worked a month and i got three dollars and 95 cents wait a second this is wrong 
And then I worked another month and I made eight dollars and forty six cents. Well, you doubled your income, but you know you're still you know not making any money. And it's it so a lot of people actually have to have to learn to to be patient in that process in that journey. Like your wife, for example, you know she's done it for a long time, and so she's paid her dues. She's been there and she's done it for a long period of time. And then some new person coming in is like, "Hey, I want what you got." Well, yeah, you can have what I got, but it's going to take you some time. You know, you're going to have to go through the process, through the journey. And and if, if more people got into, honestly, any business in or out of network marketing and just could uh, exercise a high degree of patience while they do it, they would be more successes. One of the problems with network marketing, honestly, is that it's too cheap to get in. It costs virtually nothing to get in. You can get in for free, 50 bucks, 100, 500, 1,000. I mean, that's nothing when you look at, starting a business, but then you look at somebody, for example, who goes out and, I don't know, starts a McDonald's franchise, you're minimum spending a, a million bucks. Yep. And I can guarantee you, anybody who starts a McDonald's franchise uh, and borrowed money, got a loan, did whatever, you know, sold their house, liquidated all their assets to, to get started, they're not treating it like a hobby. They're not treating it like an absentee manager. They're you know, they're, they got so much skin in the game that they're going to do it. And that's why you see people winning, why you see them succeeding. And a lot of times people are like, yeah, I didn't really put any money in this deal. It's like 50 bucks. Oh, you know, nothing, I'm not losing anything here. And that's just, um, that's an unfortunate attitude that a lot of people approach it because it is so cheap to get in. I've made observations over the years and Todd, I want you to tell me if you've observed the same thing. And this isn't against anybody, but Business building isn't for anybody. The opportunities in network marketing are offered to anybody. Anybody can get into it. Like you said, the barriers to entry are very low. Financially, it's hardly anything. And someone's going to invite you to a meeting somewhere. It's going to be your friend or your cousin. Happens all the time. That's where people usually start. Call your friends and cousin and your, your, your Aunt Molly, right? And then so you start into this you know, business but a lot of people are really destined to be W-2 employees somewhere. And some discover network marketing and blossom when many others won't. Here's what I love about the opportunity, though, is if you're entrepreneurial and you know you want to be a business owner, I can't think of a better business to get involved in because all the pieces are already there. They're tested out and you've got a huge support system and you basically have built in mentors above you to help you and educate you. And the worst case scenario is you can take that education somewhere else because you educate. Uh, that is an absolute fact. And what's interesting, you know, being a coach and trainer for as long as I have, I've had people that I've bumped into in, in the most random places around the world where they've taken things that they learned from me team network marketing and applied it into other things. A real quick one, for example, I was, I was on the boardwalk in San Diego on a 4th of July weekend about eight, nine years ago with my kids. And I'm just sitting there, just people watching and whatever, just watching people skate and bike and walk by. And all of a sudden I hear this. And it's the sound of like tires, you know, stopping on a Sandy uh, pathway. And I, this guy stops and he backs up his bike and he's like, he looks at me, he goes, he goes, are you Todd Falcone? I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, Hey, and he reaches out and he introduces himself. He goes, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's introduces himself. And he said, listen, he goes, Hey, he goes, I plugged into you for a long time. Um, it, you know, did went through a bunch of your trainings, purchased a bunch of your training courses. I'm not at all involved in network marketing anymore, but all of that training helped me to become a better person. He goes, I used to weigh about 400 pounds. And I'm looking at the guys like probably 180 fit, he goes, now I'm doing biathlons, triathlons, I'm doing marathons. And he, and he goes, I just want to thank you because you made this huge impact on my life. And then he was gone. And I was just like, I'm like what just happened? <laughs> it was just so crazy. I mean, there's multiple times I've had experiences like that. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are taught or that you will learn here that can be applied into lots of other businesses. In fact, I got friends of mine that are not necessarily involved in network marketing anymore, but they have excelled massively in other businesses because of all of the things that they did learn while they were involved in the network marketing profession. I tell young people all the time, Todd, if you don't know what you want to do, get a job for the paycheck and dive into network marketing. Trust me, 
They'll allow you into their meeting. Go to a whole bunch, meet people, shake hands, make contacts, pay the few dollars. Back in the day, buy the tapes and the CDs. <laughs> That's the yeah. way it used to be back when I was young. But get involved, and it may not be the best opportunity for you at that time, but you're going to make lifelong contacts. And the people who are successful in these organizations are master salespeople. They're very good marketers. They're great at connecting with people. And that's the basis of a good sales organization in any company. And so you really can't go wrong. People go to college and they study business. I went to college. I majored in marketing with a minor in communication. I learned from a bunch of professors, like I said earlier. Some actually had worked in the real world and some hadn't. That's fine. I had to spend four years somewhere between 18 and 22. I learn most by being on the street with the people who are more mature than I was in that area. And what you do is fantastic because you've been around the block. You can coach people and it's invaluable. Like you said, the guy on the boardwalk had nothing to do with network marketing. But what you talk about and what you teach and coach has to do with development in your life. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, I think it's, I think it's the greatest profession in the world personally. Uh, not that, you know, it's the only one people, I think sometimes networkers are kind of weird and they're like, Oh yeah, it's like they, you know, if somebody doesn't do their network marketing business, they, they make fun of them. I'm like, if it's not for everybody, you know, mm. we don't want everybody in network marketing. We can't, if we had everybody like the world wouldn't function, like who's going to fly the airplane. If everybody's involved in network marketing, who's going <laughs> to serve the dinner? Who's going to, run the the laundromat or whatever it is like we need people in all sorts of different careers i think it's a pretty cool place i mean it's been uh it's been my home for three and a half decades and i can't see myself doing anything else yeah and you're obviously a professional and speaking of that i will be putting in the show notes todd's contact information so if you want to reach out to him and learn more it will all be there so when they do click on it in the show notes what are they going to find out about you and how they can help themselves? They're going to find out who I am, what my background is, how I'm qualified to potentially assist them in their network marketing journey. They'll find access to hundreds of free training videos. Uh, they'll have access to my store. Uh, they have a direct way of contacting me and connecting with me if they want to be coached by me or they're looking to potentially book me to speak or train for their organization or company. And um, yeah, it's a full blown uh, website where they can, you know, find out everything that they need to know about uh, me and how I can help them. Todd, what I love about what you offer, which is smart, is you offer free content. And the nice thing about that is you're not afraid to give away some great nuggets because it's important. And plus, you want to. People who've been around the block like you and I, we want to give back. We almost can't help it. I send people books all yeah. the time at my expense. I send I send boxes of books to people. I'm like, you got to read this book. And I'm just here to help them, like the guy on the boardwalk, right? You just want to help people. So when you give out the free content, it's great. And what's also cool about that content, like a video that you may do, and I actually watched one of your videos recently about looking into the camera. That is great, great advice, right? So what's great about that is it kind of weeds out people, which helps them and it helps you. Because when people decide they want to engage with you, they've gotten to know, like, and trust you through the process, and then they're ready to go deeper. And if they don't contact you, maybe you've helped them out to lose weight or something or helped them out with their marriage, not even knowing it. Um, but they've decided that engaging with you isn't the best thing. And everybody wins in that scenario. Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and they can plug in and they can get whatever they want for free and watch videos and if there's something in there they feel like hey this guy could help me and i want to dive in with a deeper relationship with them than they do and i don't know it's uh and i love giving away free stuff i mean i give i've been I've been pushing out free content for i don't even know 18 19 years and uh it's fun i mean it's good and i do like you said i feel i kind of feel obligated uh mm -hmm. not by anybody for that matter but just obligated based on the fact that i've had such a 
an incredible beach money lifestyle. It's fu- funny because the title of that book, I'm, I love the beach. Don't get me wrong, um, but I'm I'm a mountain dude. So it's for me, it's like mountain money. <laughs> so you know, I have to talk to Jordan. I'm like, bro, you need to you need to let's write a book called Mountain Money. We'll do it together. So, um, but uh, yeah, beaches, mountains, wherever it is that you like to be. You know, it could be cruise money because a lot of people love to go on cruises and cruise the world. I'm actually going on a cruise with Jordan in November. It's a podcaster's cruise. So what? that'll be interesting. There'll be all kinds of networkers on 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 that cruise. And, um, you know, Jordan, let's talk a little bit about him. He, you know, when he started off, like you said, he wasn't super successful right away. And over time, he's become huge in his space and he gets to help others every day and he gets to fly helicopters, drive nice cars, live in different cities, travel the world. And what's really cool about what he does is if he decided to, which he doesn't do a lot of this, I don't think, but if he decided to take two weeks off and just spend time at the beach by himself, he could because he built a machine that operates with him, uh, without him or a little with him, but he can't help it, right? He he keeps working those hours every day to help others, but ultimately he's building his business even bigger. Yeah, I mean, I talk to him probably once a week and he's on an airplane's place or he's up at his mountain house or his other house or he's flying over to see this person or uh, and honestly, the cool thing about Jordan is like, he doesn't have to do any of that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like he's, you know, he could, he could be done financially, honestly. Um, but he just, he, he loves what he does and he loves helping people and he's still out there building just like he was the very first day he started the business. Yeah. And I think it's like any other business owner. The reason why people who own businesses often will then sell them or if they lose their business, people say, how were they able to recover again? It's like the Donald Trump story. He's gone bankrupt and he lost and, you know, the casinos went downhill and he's, you know, back to be a billionaire again. It's because it's in the blood. It's who you are. And it's easier to do it again once you've done it before. And something about network marketing is really key is the network. It's the connections. If if you or Jordan or even myself wanted to do something else in business, our Rolodex is deep. And for those of you who don't know what a Rolodex is, <laughs> it's a CRM. It's a it's an old fashioned way where you put down people's names and their phone numbers when we used to call people. And so when we have the connections, the network, it makes it so much easier. And I find when people leave the corporate world, they're often let go in their 50s. It happens a lot. They're making a good income, but for whatever reason, the organization has decided to part ways with this nice 50-year-old individual. They don't have a lot of contacts in the real world, right? So they're thrown out into the jungle and they get eaten alive. But someone like Jordan Adler, if he was thrown into the jungle today, he could build a business like that. Yeah, I think the uh, I don't care what you do for a living. I think being a, a, a networker, whether you're in network marketing or not, is going to serve you well for so many different purposes in or, in or out of business. Uh, you know, I think it's and you have to be uh, you, know, you have to you, it doesn't you can't just wait around and hope that you're going to build a, a network. You got to get out there. You got to put yourself in position. You have to attend business mixers or functions or get yourself in front of people and around people to make connections. And, you know, uh, you talk about your, your network, like that's like, if there's anything that I would, I would be fearful of, of losing in terms of like data, it would be like the 7,000 phone numbers that are in my phone. I literally have seven, actually just over 7,000. The other day it was 7,000, but it's a couple more because I've added a few people, but you know, these are individuals that I've connected with directly in life in one way or another. And uh, I, the way I treat that network, these, these people that I connect with or that I've been connected with is, is continuing to stay connected with those people. In fact, a lot of times when I'm asked like, okay, so like I was actually on a radio show a couple of years ago, actually now it's been about four years. And the guy asked me, they did this full vetting process. They wanted to know if I was legit, real, like, you know, whatever. So <laughs> we get into the conversation and we're like 10 minutes into the conversation. And the guy says to me, 
he goes, he goes, what, he goes, what's the, he goes, what's the one reason why you haven't had a financial implosion in over 30 years? And I kind of laughed. I was like, well, uh, I go, I can't really answer that question because the way you asked it, but it's, it's two reasons really. And I know exactly why. Number one, uh, every single day I do something to propel my business forward. Like I'm always doing some type of direct revenue producing activity making it, you know, making a new contact, getting a new client, selling whatever it is I'm selling. I'm always in that mode. But secondly, and most importantly, the reason why I haven't had any kind of implosion is because I'm a connector. I've been a relationship builder and I'm, I, and I'm known as this guy amongst my peers where I'll just reach out to say, what's up? Not like, Oh, by the way, let me sell you this widget, you know, or get me on your next training it's just to just to say hi. And I call that making an emotional deposit. Like you can't go, you can't make a withdrawal from an empty bank account, right? You can't, you can't. There's, if you got no money in the account, you ain't taking any money out. Can't do this, the same thing with relationships. How, you can't take a, make a withdrawal from an empty relationship account. So when it comes to this whole concept of networking, and this is something I've been teaching, it's part of what I, one of the things that I teach is, is really learning how to build relationship capital. Uh, by, you know, for example, I remember I was sitting next to a guy in, um, in Salt Lake city. I was at an event. We were out at this lunch. It was some event I was speaking at some guy was sitting, you know, a couple down from me, uh, said something to me. And I was like, what's your name? He was like, Brandon. And I, and I was like, what's your last name? He mentioned his last name. And I was like, you oh, know, and I go into my phone and I go, Oh dude. Yeah. We met in 1998 when you're with company X and living in, and he's like, what, how do you, what, how do you remember that? I'm like, and I don't say this normally, but he happened to be, I go, cause I got notes on you. Mm -hmm. Like literally every single person that I put into my phone, you know, how we met, who referred me to them, what their, you know, mom's name is when their birthday, whatever things that were, I felt were important, I'm going to put them in there. Cause my brain isn't, none of our brains are good enough to remember all that stuff. And it puts you in, in a, in a way better position. And one of the key things that I do from like this, this building relationship capital, uh, conversation is when you find out what somebody is like really into, like, for example, we both know that Jordan, he's into several things, but he definitely likes helicopters, right? We know that, you know, he's a helicopter pilot. And if we got into a conversation, for example, and let's say I didn't know Jordan and we start talking and I'm like, Oh yeah, I was, I was, you know, doing, I was doing a tour of the volcanoes and this helicopter it was a cool, he's like oh, helicopters wait, what? He's like, oh my gosh, I'm a helicopter pilot. I love that. Da, 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 da. And maybe whether I know a bunch about helicopters or not, you know, I, I find out that that's like one of his, you know, deepest passions. Like he's like super into helicopters. So I'm going to go in my notes and go Jordan helicopter pilot really into helicopters. And I might see, you know, down the road, I might see some article on this new bell helicopter and maybe I'm not into it, but I know Jordan is. And I sent him this video and I said, Hey bro, you know, just saw this, thought you might dig it. And, you know, it's maybe two minutes of, you know, whatever entertainment for him. And he's all excited about it. Cause that's like one of his passion points. And it also, what that does, it goes, Oh wait, Todd knows me. He knows me. Yes. Like he knows the, the yes. depth of me and it, and it just, it creates this bond. It creates this strength in that relationship that just, you know, it can't be broken. Um, so there's, you know, I mean, this, we'd have to get into like a really lengthy conversation about this, but this is like one of my favorite things to teach is, is, you know, building relationship capital, uh, and, you know, understanding that if you're in sales or you're in business, you got to, and I think most people know this, like people buy from those that they like and trust and they feel good about, well, what can you do to, to, to create that environment, that, that buyer friendly environment. So that's something that I can honestly, I could train on for hours. So Todd, do you believe that not everybody is pre-programmed to think that way? In other words, I think that way. I before Zuckerberg, that's Mark Zuckerberg, ruined my game, I would call people on their birthday because I knew it. I mean, I didn't have to write it down. I'm very good with dates. I'm more likely to remember your name, Todd. I'm I'm sorry, more likely to remember your birthday than I am your name. It's just how I'm wired. And so every year I'd call people on their birthday and they'd be like, thanks. How do you remember? I'm like, it's just in my mind. And then of course, Facebook comes out and people put in their birthday. We're all advised. So that kind of ruined my game. Um, but I'd like to think that, that I stay in touch with people and I touch upon things that are important to them, things they have passion for. 
But I also believe that's kind of innate in me. Do some people really need to be trained to have that? It's like being trained to have compassion almost, right? It's it's like, you know, do you have it or not? So how do you overcome that with someone who says, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean I have to remember things and and, and then match them up with the guy's passion? I mean, so how do you overcome yeah. that with, with uh, a client? Well, I mean, they they can be taught. Like I had to be taught. Like I, when I began my sales journey, somebody told me early on is like, hey, hey man, if you're going to be successful here, uh, you got to understand that people buy from those that they like and trust. Okay, cool. So I was like, okay, if that's the case, I wanted to do things where people liked and trusted me. Um, you know, I, I learned like, Hey, if you if you have an appointment, um, you need to be on time for that appointment. And for me on time is, is, you know, five minutes early, like even, you know, showing up here, I was on the zoom waiting for you five minutes before we, we got going. Um, this whole idea of fashionably late, you know, comes from like showing up at a party and you don't want to be the first person at a party, but when it comes to business that don't fly. Yeah. So people can be taught things like even, even for example, like charisma, right? So charisma like we we have people that we know that are incredibly charismatic and there's just something about them that just we're drawn to them and it's like they represent something that just makes us feel incredibly good and what the definition of charisma is a compelling attractiveness or charm and some people naturally have that and some people naturally have just ways of doing things and a lot of it has to do with how we're raised like my mom and dad they were like they taught me you know i had i came up from a good you know not not a wealthy family but a family that had good principles and good morals. And so there were things that I've done because I was just taught to do it that way. And so some people need to understand that like if if like like you can you can be you can be taught. Like I didn't know how to prospect in network marketing, uh, but I found out that prospecting was important. I was, you know, like you talked earlier, like I was a stuttering, sweaty, nervous wreck who could barely recruit anybody to save my life. And I was, every time I get on the phone, I'd have butterflies in my stomach. My, I'd be sweating. My palms would be sweating. I, my, my mouth would, would get dry. And, but I was like, okay, like I learned early, Hey, if you're going to win here, you got to be able to recruit people. You got to be able to, to prospect. And I was like, okay, so if that's the case, I'm going to go get good at it. And so I started to ask the questions. I started to seek out answers. I started to, you know, watch people, observe people that were better than me that were good at it when I wasn't good at it. And the cool thing about, you know, business, uh, you know, everything is learnable. I mean, there's, there's interesting, like there's certain things that like make me break out into a cold sweat. If I look at charts and numbers and figures and too much detail, like my brain kind of goes into shutdown mode. Um, you know, that's just how I know how I operate, but I, I don't necessarily need to be able to look at a bunch of charts and numbers in order for me to succeed in my, in, in my particular career. Now, if I was in, I don't know, in engineering or something, and it was all about charts and numbers or whatever, then I would probably have to really kind of work on that. But, and I'm sure I could work on it. It's just, you know, that ha doesn't happen to be my, my sweet spot, you know, socializing, connecting with people tends to be my sweet spot, but it's also something that I've developed. This is not a craft that I, you know, was, was born with, like, think about even like speaking and training. I was not good. The first several times I was on the platform, uh, first few times I was on video, I wasn't very good. And I had to learn how to become better. I watched other people that were on video or people that were on the platform. I studied it and I did it over and over again. So, uh, I, I firmly believe that, you know, if there's, Pretty much anything we do is learnable. Like, I don't know, like uh, I got guitars in my background. Uh, God didn't gift me with an amazing singing voice. I'm sure that if I took vocal lessons for an extended period of time, I could manage to hold a tune and I would get it. I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm not going to be Mariah Carey or anything like that, but you know, I could, I could sing a song better than I, than I can right now. It's just never been that important to me to do that. You know, I put my hands on the, on the guitar and play the guitar and I'll let somebody else sing. Um, but, you know, again, I think it's, it's all workable. It's all a matter of like, how, you know, how badly do you want it? Like in my case with, with going to the beginning of like my network marketing career, when I first looked at network marketing, like I, I was, I grew up in a broke household. We didn't have very much money. I knew I wanted to win. I knew I wanted to be successful. And uh, I, I knew that I was going to, you know, whatever my career path was going to be, I wanted to pursue a career path that was financially fruitful. So I got exposed to this profession and I saw this whole concept of building a team and moving products to a network of other people and 
there's no limit on the size of your income based on the size of your organization. And so I was like, man, I was excited about that whole concept, that whole idea. And, but at the same time, I didn't know anything about it. I mean, it was brand new. The first time I was exposed to network marketing, I had never heard of network marketing prior to that first exposure. So I didn't have any like, oh, is this a pyramid? Only ones that pyramids I knew were in Egypt. I didn't have like only the people at the top make the money. I didn't have any of the any of the misconceptions, which are really, quite frankly, misconceptions that a lot of people have. I just came in. I was like, here's this cool business model that makes sense. Okay, I just now I've got to figure out a way to make it work for me. And so I started to really work on that craft. So I think it's just a matter of somebody making the decision to work on something. And if they want it bad enough, they're going to figure out a way to make it happen. I agree. You've got to want it and then you've got to practice it. There's this number 10,000 hours. Now, before I get into the 10,000 hour deal, you don't need to put 10,000 hours into anything. But if you put 10,000 hours into anything, you will be pretty much the best in that field. Golf, tennis, networking, whatever it is. Um, that's a lot of hours, by the way, when you start dividing that by days, it's 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 a lot. But if you want to be the best athlete, if you want to be the best in your field, regardless of what space you're in, you need to put time into it. If it's not 10,000 hours, try at least 500 hours. And you, it, it gets easier and easier over time. The Fearless Networker, Todd Falcone, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And everybody, once again, in the show notes, Todd's information is there. So you can reach out to him, engage with him and some free content videos and all of that that he produces on a regular basis is there. All right, Todd, thank you so much, my friend, and continue to live the beach money life. Always do, brother. Appreciate it.